talk to you. This is my sermon title, Operating Under a New Administration. How's that for a title? Operating Under a New Administration. And uh, as Glenn mentioned, come out and let's intercede and pray and seek the face of the Lord. I believe the Church of Jesus Christ as a whole is preparing the ground for an increase in the midst of all the warfare and hardship that a lot of people are having to go through. The pastor that I mentioned last week that uh, if the fines are up to $52,000 that they are having to pay to have worship on Sunday morning. He says he's not closing his church and I hope he's not paying that fine because there's a lot of cases right now that are in the court system that are challenging uh, our governor and challenging the uh, what's happening as far as shutting the church down. Can you imagine we would be outside in 110 degree weather if we obeyed what the governor said? Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. As I said before, abortion clinics and um, all kinds of different things can stay open, but somehow if you worship God in, uh, inside, somehow we're a danger to one another. It's just, not to belabor the point, but it's just that's the type of spirit that we're up against. You're all, uh, with Diana mentioned, we've all been troubled by the violence, uh, the destruction, uh, the death, and the lawlessness. It's just, I'm just amazed at the callousness of people's hearts that have gotten so hard. And But we need to recognize the spirits that are in operation. We're not fighting against flesh and blood as much as flesh and blood are doing deeds of violence and uh, the things that are going on, the destruction. But it is the spirit behind what's going on. And that's what we're fighting against. And that's why we're praying is that God would just uh, shut these things down. Um, but I want to tell you this, that God was throughout the pandemic, with the violence, with everything that's going on, God has a plan. This is not the, this did not sneak up on God. He got, he's using this for his own purposes and glory. And we are part of that plan. Even as Diana read to you today that first uh, Corinthians chapter, not all of it, but part of it, that as much as the enemy has planned, God is going to let him overplay his hand. Did you hear that? The enemy has plans and God's going to let him overplay his hand where God's plans are going to be used and manifested. So I'll just say this. I was, I was writing my notes. Sharpen your sickle. You know what a sickle is? What's the sickle for? Harvest. God is preparing us, I believe, for a harvest of people that are going to come to Jesus because they're realizing of what's going on and that I need to get right with God. How do we operate the administration of the kingdom of God? How do we, as a Christian, operate under the administration of the kingdom of God? Somebody might say, well, what does the word administration mean? Most of, most of us have an uh, understanding, but it's basically like this. In our city of Lake Elsinore, we have a mayor. We have a mayor pro tem. And we have city council the city council, all working together, and they make the decision for Lake Elsinore. They gather together, they make plans, and they cause those plans to begin to take place in this city of Lake Elsinore. Well, how many you know that the king of the kingdom has a plan and we are his subject? How many of you can understand what I'm saying? It is the plan of the king, of our King Jesus, and we are his subject, we are his sons and daughters, that we are operating under his lordship. I am glad Jesus is my Lord. Is he Lord today of you? Are you surrendering yourself to him and are you letting him call the shots? So the city council will call the shots for this city, Washington, Sacramento, and all those things. We can see that. But listen, the Lord Jesus Christ is dispersing his plans and his purposes to you and I. And when you realize that you're a part of his plan, when you realize that I'm under the administration of the grace of the Holy Spirit and King Jesus is in heaven 
and I am doing his will, and I, he has called me and chosen me to do, use my gifts, as Diana read, use our gifts and use our talents and use our time for God's glory. It's amazing that God would choose us to disperse his administration in the earth. You're quiet this morning. Is it true? Through administering his rule and reign in the earth. And as much as we see manifested in the enemy's plans, I want you to know that God has his plans again. And what one thing that we need to understand very clearly, and we're going to look at Scripture in just a moment, God is manifesting in your everyday life, displaying his love through you for his plan. Did you catch that? God is manifesting in your life every day his purpose and plan that others might see. And I wrote this down. Jesus Christ said that you are salt and you are light. We are salt and we are light. What does salt do? It preserves. I saw something this morning early. I got up at 4.30 this morning. I can't sleep. I'm all wound up. So I got up to pray and read and get ready and everything. And I, I checked my, uh, I think it was on Facebook, and they had discovered these mummies that were several hundred miles south of Tehran in Iran. And these mummies were buried in this cave. And the salt, and they're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old, the salt had preserved these mummies. I mean, their hair had turned blonde and they had beards and stuff. And, but you could see their skin. And, uh, you know, they're deteriorated. But it was amazing that these mummies, and some of them were down there and they were born in different eras and they had worked in this salt mine, but the salt had preserved these mummies. I want to tell you, the salt of the gospel causes you to preserve not only yourself because we have his salt in us, but we have been called to salt our neighbors. Now, don't go get a salt shaker and start doing this to your neighbors. God has called us with our saltiness, the salt society, and the salt, and also light. So you're a preserving factor, but you're also light in the midst of the darkness. Now, think about that for a minute. Salt, preserving, light in the midst of the darkness. People are looking for some light. They're looking for some hope. And guess what? Here we are. Here we are. We are salt and we are light. So rejoice today. Salt and light. Don't disqualify yourself and say, well, you know what? I've had a bad witness and I, I've failed and I've blown it and I haven't been the type of Christian that I should be. Start today. What happened to you? Jesus is good. God is good. The Holy Spirit is good. And I'm living for Jesus. And just live it. You, sometimes you just don't need to just say anything. Just live it. Just live the life. So salt people around you. Light is the opposite spirit of darkness. Light is the opposite spirit of darkness. I'd like to share with you a story, and you don't have to turn to it, but you might want to write this down. In 2 Kings, the first chapter, verses 1 to 18, there's a story. And in this story, there was a king. His name was Ahaziah, and he was mad at the prophet Elijah. Mad. So he sent three groups of 50 men, and each men, each group of 50, they had the leader. And so he said, go get Elijah. So they go to get Elijah and they said, come down. I'm taking you to the king and king. And Elijah said, let fire come from heaven and the fire would come from heaven and burn him up. 50, the leader, sent another group of 50. They said to come down. The king wants to talk to you. Basically, they've come to arrest him, but they're scared. They didn't go up and get him. They just said, would you just come down peaceably? He said, let fire come down from heaven. Another fire came down from heaven, burned up the 50, burned up the leader. Finally, they sent the third group of 50 with the leader. And he practically gets on his knees and the men and says, please, please, please don't destroy us. 
We're just here because the king told us to. Please, just go see the king, but please have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. We don't want to die because we saw what happened to the other hundred plus the leaders that were leading them. He was angry. Go get him. Why did Elijah do that? He did it to defend himself because they were going to probably take him and probably try to kill him because of this angry king. God directed Elijah to call fire down from heaven. I want you to hear this because of the story that we're going to talk about in just a minute. God told Elijah, call the fire down so you can protect yourself. Directed by God. Directed by God. God was the one that brought the judgment. Let me say this to you. As much as we see so much frustration and anger and how can that be going on and boy, I'd like to do my part and everything else. Let God be God and let him bring judgment. Let God be the one. And this, and hear me this morning, this is, uh, this message you're hearing is not for us to take on the uh, attitude of being passive. We're not being passive in our prayer. But we realize God is the one that judges. God is the one that's going to bring vengeance. God is the one that's going to straighten everything else. But my job and your job is to be under the administration of the grace of God. Now let's look at this story in Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 51 to 56. Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 51 and 56. Turn in your Bibles to that. Luke 9, verses 51 to 56. And now it came to pass when the time had come for him, capitalized him, Jesus, to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Jesus going through Samaria to go to Jerusalem. And Jesus was determined to go to Jerusalem, as we just read. But the disciples went ahead of him to prepare the way to tell the people that Jesus the Messiah is coming, or Jesus of Nazareth is coming. And, you know, Jesus had already been through villages in Samaria already and it healed and people got, things happened. So they knew who he was. The disciples went, prepared the way for Jesus on his way to Jerusalem for the cross. And they prepared the way by telling the people, but it says they would not receive him. They would not receive him and that he was the Messiah and he had a message for them. Basically, the people in this village rejected Jesus. So the sons of thunder, you know, we're dealing with these brothers. James and John, remember reading that they're called the sons of thunder? So they get the idea. Now, if you read the first part of Luke 9, Jesus had commissioned them with the Holy Spirit and with fire. They had been commissioned. They were laying hands upon the sick. They were preaching the gospel. They were casting out demons. They were doing the work. Chapter 9. This is later on in that same chapter. So they're feeling pretty good about themselves. That we are the group. We are the church. Look at us. We had prayed for the sick. We had cast out demons. We had done all this stuff. And so when they saw that Jesus was rejected, they took it upon themselves to have an attitude that he needed to speak to. How many are following the story? James and John and Jesus had said, 
that these are the sons of thunder. So, well, they were thundering. But they weren't thundering with the Spirit. <laughs> they were thundering with the flesh. And Jesus turned. Now, it says, but he turned and rebuked them. Why did he turn? Because Jesus was making his way out of the village. They had rejected him. They didn't want to hear it. So he just, it says that he went to another village. He's going to another village, and he turned around to these guys, and he said, you don't know what spirit you're of. You don't know what spirit you, you're of. You wanted the same type of thing that Elijah did. Well, Elijah did it because he was instructed by God and it was a judgment, but also for Elijah's defense. And these guys were just ticked off. You ain't going to go to our church. You don't believe like I believe? Come on. None of us have ever had any thoughts like this at all. God, and this is the thing that's humorous to me. They said, Jesus, would you, they didn't say, Jesus, would you call fire down from heaven and consume them? They said, Lord, do you want us, the high and mighty sons of thunder, do you want us to call fire down from heaven and consume this whole village, boys and girls, moms and dads, just consume them? And Jesus, he said, he turned around. He looked at him and says, really? You don't know what spirit you're of. What was the spirit that was manifesting? Anger? Revenge? Pride? Huh? All those were in their heart. And Jesus said, you don't know what matter of spirit you're of. Listen, we will all experience rejection and unkindness by people. Has anybody experienced any rejection or unkindness lately? But we must understand God's administration of salvation and mercy. We must understand God's administration, administering through us the message of the gospel of salvation and mercy. He said, you know what kind of spirit you're of. I believe you and I are fed up with the persecution and the unfairness and the violence and everything locked up and, you know, just this whole spirit that's upon the land. But we can't fight it with the flesh. See, the sons of thunder wanted to fight it with the flesh. All right, we'll just tell God. There you go. Burn up the whole village. That's not his heart. Jesus said, you're under my administration. And I don't do things like that. Look what he says in the verse. He says, For well, the Son of Man, verse 56, did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. That's the Lord's heart. Not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Of course, there is going to be a judgment. We are going to stand before God. Yes, we know that. And so Jesus it says there, and they went to another village. Jesus was just saying, well, so what? Just, just go to another village. You catch the message here? Jesus was saying, this is not coming from the Father or me or the Holy Spirit. This is hateful. This is revenge. And I did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. We must understand God's administration of salvation and mercy. It's so important that we make sure we have the... You know, you can say the right thing, but have the wrong spirit or the wrong attitude. If you don't believe me, a, a, a husband can say something to his wife and it could be the right thing, but it has an attitude behind it. Come on, ladies, is it true? Yeah, I'll take the trash out after I'm done watching the Dodgers. I'll take it out. In Matthew 5, verses 44 and 45, I want to read this to you. Jesus' words to us. Matthew 5, verses 44 to 45. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. 
and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son, notice eight big, large eight there, his son, rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. He said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And I like what verse 45 says, that the phrase there, Jesus said, that you may be sons of your Father. In other words, that's the spirit that God wants you to have when you're being persecuted and treated badly and shunned and rejected and everything else. He said that you may be sons of your father. That's the acid test. That sets you apart from someone that wants to take somebody out. Hear me. I'm not against self-defense or someone trying to break in your home or, or something like that, protecting your loved ones. I think that's different. But I'm saying when people just basically treat you wrong and they have a different attitude, he says, pray for them, bless them, so you'll show that you are sons of your Father. And look what Jesus says there, because he causes the sun to shine on the good and the bad and the ugly. And he causes the rain to do the very same thing. That's the kind of heart our God has towards those and how we're treated. Jesus could have been offended because they rejected him in that village. But he wasn't. But it was a lesson. And this is just something for you and I this morning. This lesson to James and John and probably the rest of the disciples, that, that lesson about having the right spirit is a lesson that we're really going to be tested in now and in the future. What type of spirit do we have? Jesus, uh, Paul wrote, he said, Vengeance is mine says the Lord, I'll repay. Let God deal with it. You know, one of the things that we need to understand as Christians is we will suffer loss with people accepting or rejecting us. We will suffer loss. There will be people that just don't like you. You don't know why they don't like you. But sometimes it's just the clash of the light in you and the darkness in them. They don't even know you and they just... It's the clash of the kingdom but love them anyway be kind anyway because this is the spirit of the the son of god the sons of your father so with the hour we live we need to attract people with the heavenly honey and not the soulish vinegar are you hearing me there's heavenly honey and it's called love and long-suffering, and there's the soul of us, and we all have a soul, and we all have a flesh that's like vinegar. Attract people with the heavenly honey and don't repel them with the soulish vinegar. Are you hearing me today? That's how God called us to live in this hour. Those words, you don't know what spirit you're of. Oh, God, please help me. I don't want to have the wrong spirit but the right spirit. The right spirit. And you know what, church? Let's just be honest here. I've got to pray up to be like that. Diana's not saying amen because I need to pray up to it. For me to operate under the administration of the Spirit, I've got to be prayed up. I've got to have the Word in me. Because that Word works. That Holy Spirit is empowerment. Because if I'm not prayed up and in the, in the Word and in the Spirit and spending time with my Lord, I'm just telling you what, I'm, I can just go off. Can you go off on something? But when I have been with Him, the Holy Spirit is God's governor that keeps you from going crazy. It's, it's it's the steering wheel of God of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God in you. The governor. 
the administration, the control of the Holy Spirit. We're going to need that more. I think it's going to get worse. Oh, Pastor, why did you say that? You know what? Things may never go back to normal. But I know we li are living in the last days and that Jesus can come. And I want to be ready. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to have that heavenly honey and not the soulish vinegar so I can attract you to Jesus Christ. How about you? I read things and see things on Facebook and, you know, people send me this send me this file and look at this file and you could just get yourself confused and all riled up all day. Am I speaking the truth? We need to discern everything. Discern. But I cannot, I cannot leave the direction of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit so I can be that heavenly honey. The only way you can handle rejection and all the things that we're experiencing and going to experience in the future is I've got to have Jesus that I can't do it on my own. Neither can you. We'll go off on someone or feel like you want to go off on someone or start moving your hands around and you shouldn't. Pointing, saying something, saying something that comes out of your mouth that you're sorry. Oh man, boy, did I have some Soulish vinegar just come out of me. I want to hear Jesus said you had the right spirit and not the wrong spirit. How do you think the sons of thunder felt after they uh, went to another town and boy, he told us we had the wrong spirit and we were just healing the sick and, you know, casting out demons and stuff like that. Again, read chapter 9. And because Jesus was not so much interested in the works that are important, but the Spirit in us, being sons of our Father. Amen? Amen. So if you found yourself, you know, and we all do, saying or doing something that's just in the flesh, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I blow it. We all blow it. We all make mistakes. But I've got to keep abiding in Him and He abiding in me so I can have the right spirit. Amen? I want you to enjoy this Labor Day weekend, whatever you're going to do with your family or whatever you're going to do. And for goodness sake, stay indoors. Why don't you just use it as a short testimony because we're going to close.